you said you do you do other things too. So you've got a couple more, and well, you've got a, one of the more inventions. Why, one of the reasons why I let this kind of go to ground for a while is because I got involved. A friend of mine actually has um, a really great idea on medical uh, devices that um, that I thought had a lot of potential. So I got involved with him. Basically, they have the patent on a, what's called what's a, a one-way valve for a urine collection system. And they've got actual three three areas that they that were doing. The one area that they were most interested in doing is the Foley catheter. Anybody in the medical industry knows what a Foley catheter is. Basically, it's the catheter that you insert to collect urine for surgery patients or debilitated patients or patients in nursing homes, et cetera, that can't control and take care of uh, of their bodily functions in regards to that. Well, what's ki what's killing the hospitals now are urinary tract infections. It's the number one cause of rehospitalizations. And it's very, very expensive for hospitals to do that. So they came up with this idea, which I thought was really great, and that is to put a valve. This is a this is a Foley catheter. That's their Foley catheter. But right in here, there is a check valve. And in that check valve, it allows the urine only to go in one direction. That's out of the body. It does not allow it to return. Because how, what urinary tract infections are mostly related to is, is reflux of a contaminated urine back in. If you think mm -hmm. about it, the urine coming back and forth. From here, the urine bag, it goes into a urine bag, so you, the, the Foley itself hooks up to um, this urine bag, and this is our urine bag. This is what I designed, basically with the same premise because we have a check valve here. So none of the urine that gets into the bag is able to reflux back in. And we also, in traditional urine bags on the T-valve here, it just slides out. You don't, you, you can, this, is, this can get easily contaminated and it's open to the air on the bottom. So it really is basically not a closed system. What we did or what I did was I redesigned the T-valve so I put these caps on the end of it that essentially keeps the ends completely sterile once it's sterilized. And also these caps are sterile. So if you remove the cap and like that you drain the urine, urine then you put the cap back on and it essentially keeps the entire urine path sterile. If you drop one of these caps or contaminated, we have replacement caps. And you just simply peel so off. So you don't have to replace the whole bag. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very similar to a lot of IV, hospitals with IV caps and stuff like that. You know, they, if they have replacement caps, you throw away and you put in a new one anytime it's contaminated. This is getting a lot of tension, a tremendous amount of tension, because I, mean, I kid you not, in the hospital setting, urinary tract infections are killing them. Um, and Medicare can come in and find you a million dollars, your hospital a million dollars if its infection rate's too high. And so, urinary tract infection, that's uh, UTI, short for that, UTI, right? UTI, urinary tract infection. Is it mostly male, female? I mean, based on what you're showing me here, this seems like it'd be either one. Oh, there's no difference between male or female if they have one of these in place as far as risk to an infection. Mm -hmm. You know, really, they they're basically are pretty much the same. Now, women generally tend to get urinary tract infections more often than men because their urethra is shorter. With the, with the men, the urethra is longer because it's because of the penis. But uh, the urethra in women is much shorter, and that's why they're more susceptible because the pathway to to the bladder is a lot shorter distance from a contamination. And so for a male, it stops before it gets there, yeah, possibly? Yeah, okay. it usually doesn't get back that far. So <laughs> urinary tract infections in men are, are fairly uncommon, whereas with women, they're fairly common. However, if you have a Foley catheter in, all bets are off. You're all in the same boat, okay. you know, as far as relative risk. This is our bag, and we are getting our final production lines coming out right now, and this is up for sale in within the next week or two. We're going to be hitting people up for that on this. Okay. Okay? All right. Now, any other inventions? Oh, yeah, uh, other we got this. We got the Foley. We've got that. And the one other thing that I have here is, is uh, Larry also, and this is the company's name is... Um, JNM Urinary Catheters. That's the company that this is all under. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we have is a um, straight cath. Straight catheters are um, used by a lot of patients and because they have incontinence. And it's very difficult to control. Once they insert this catheter into the bladder, um, it just flows. But w what we have here is a patented uh, valve. Again, it's a pinch valve. So it doesn't flow until you pinch it. You pinch it and it flows, you release and it closes. You pinch it and it flows, you release and it closes. And this is um, the third product that, that JNM urinary catheters has.